Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. Okay, so as you guys can tell by the title, I always do it this way. Meanwhile, technically the video, the title will be that way. So as you can tell by the title, um, this is a wash day routine video. I have done my best because I couldn't put the camera in the shower. So I had to put my phone in the shower. Um, you know, thank God that it's waterproof um, to film while I was washing my hair. So for most of this video, it's gonna be a voiceover of me talking through the process of washing my hair and what I use having seboric dermatitis. Before we get to that, I just wanna show you the products properly and just explain how and why I use them. Um, just because I probably won't get a good chance to do so in the video itself, like when we cut to the shower scene. So for my shampoo, hope you can see that, I use Head and Shoulders classic clean not the two-in-one just the regular head and shoulders shampoo um, obviously because I have seboric dermatitis anything that's going to help with minimizing shampoo I will use that so that's what I use to wash my hair and my you know my scalp and then in terms of being able to keep the seboric dermatitis at bay I use this called Nizoro I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right Nizoro Nizoral. I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but it's that product. Um, obviously, Head & Shoulders is widely available pretty much everywhere. Nizoral, I know, is available in Boots. Um, I know it's also available in Tesco's. I've not seen it in Asda, so I'm, I don't know. But you can always order it online. I used to order mine online from eBay until I discovered I could get in Tesco and Boots for the same price. So, you know, why pay to have to wait a few days where you can just pick it up straight away so I get mine in store now it's not expensive it is a very small bottle it's a 60 more bottle and it works out about six pounds depending on where you go you don't use this to wash your head this is an antifungal treatment like I said either the seboric dermatitis is coming before or after this video I'm not sure yet so you'll understand what I mean by antifungal but this is what keeps the fungus for want of a better word, at bay. So this is only going on your scalp. So it looks like a shampoo, it works like a shampoo, but you're not using it, I'm not using it to wash the length of my hair. It's literally, I'm letting it lather up on my scalp and then washing it out after three to five minutes. So that's that. Now, to the shower. Okay, so here we are in my shower. I start off by parting my hair into two. I don't think I've ever washed my hair just all in one. I must, if I have, I must have been in like a crazy rush. But yeah, my typical go-to is to split my hair into two and tie them, or yeah, tie them back with um, hair bands. Um, and I just wash my hair in two halves. can see I've taken my head and shoulders um, I take I think I take quite a lot compared to most people I don't know but I am focusing on my scalp so my deep cleans are when I'm going to retighten my hair and this shampoo is really just to keep my scalp clean cleanse my scalp so you can see I'm rubbing the shampoo in I'm not really worrying about the length of my hair and I always just start off by massaging it in I'm just trying to make sure every inch of my scalp is covered and then I start using the pads of my fingers I don't have nails anyway <laughs> um, but I don't use my nails to scratch my scalp I just use the pads of my fingertips my main aim when um, scrubbing my scalp is to dislodge any flakes or um, dry skin that has Formed. So like the nature of seboric dermatitis is that your skin, like the, the malassezia yeast causes your skin to like overgrow, um, hence the, you know, dandruff flaky scalp. So I'm really, especially for, you know, having locks, my hair is recently retightened. So I'm really trying to dislodge any flakes or dry skin so that it's easy for me to rinse out um, because I don't want it to get stuck in you know the little bit of regrowth that I might have and then end up getting intertwined with the locks so I really really am trying to dislodge any flakes any dry skin that's come away you know any 
flakes that have come away from the skin so that I can rinse them out and my hair stays clean and not looking like it's full of build up or lint. So here I am with the Lizoral, the one I showed you earlier. It is the antifungal treatment that I use to keep the support dermatitis at bay. Um, essentially it is, how does this, I guess I want to explain it. It sounds kind of gross, but the way it works is it pokes holes, pokes is probably the wrong word, but it makes holes in the cell membranes of the yeast or the fungus. Um, in my case, that the man says, you know, it's a yeast. Um, and so all the yucky innards within the cell leak out and, you know, the cell dies. So I don't know, kind of imagine, uh, I don't know, imagine someone poking loads of holes in your intestines or something and everything leaks out. Like, no, nah, that wouldn't actually kill you, but it's the best analogy I could think of on the fly. <laughs> so yeah, I just apply it to my scalp. It's not like, it, it. the treatment is in the form of a shampoo, but I don't use it to clean my hair. I just try and get, make sure every inch is covered on the scalp. And then, um, yeah, I move over to the other side and do exactly the same thing. So as I am not focusing on the length of my hair with this wash, I want to be extra careful to make sure any soap that's gotten left behind in the length gets rinsed out completely. So that's the motion you can see me like scrubbing the length of my hair so that if there's any soap in there, it really all gets out because that's another way to avoid build up, making sure you rinse your hair completely. And so yeah, I just rope, loosely rope twist it and then put it away and I will do the same thing again to the other side. So, hair's washed. It's been drying in this towel for like what feels like about five or six hours now. So, I I thought about it and I said, like, should I just do a voiceover and say what I've done? 
but that's not really the point of a tutorial is it so let's take these leggings off get my pippy long stocking bunches out yes here we are see so see how it looked really long and hanging in the shower and now it's just like so the very front row of my hair does not get retightened I palm roll it I retwist it um, because to me it just looks neater so right here all of here is just loose fuzzy hair I hope you can see that clearly because I'm trying to see in the viewfinder it doesn't look very clear but okay yeah all here is just fuzzy right but then if I pull that kind of front row forward you can see here it was nicely retightened and neat so um, part of my wash day routine after I've washed my hair is to retwist the front row along here but the rest obviously is normal so what I do first is I take my little pippy long stocking pigtails out and it's quite dry it's still a bit um, a little bit damp but I'm gonna sit under the dryer so that's absolutely fine so I've got my distilled water in here and then alongside my distilled water I have vegetable glycerin um, I don't know if it's gonna focus will it who knows but it's just 100% pure glycerin and I've got probably about a tablespoon a tablespoon and a half of glycerin in here and that is just to my humectant just to you know give it a bit of zhuzh so I'm not trying to re-wet my hair that much but it's gone quite dry and I'm gonna sit under the dryer but I want I want the humectant in there as well I don't want it to be just water I think I remember in the last no, not in the last video, in the five year lock update, I told you guys that I use MCT oil. MCT oil is, uh, in a simple format, it's what keto dieters use in their bulletproof coffee um, because it's essentially medium chain fatty acids or medium chain triglycerides. Medium chain, tri medium chain fatty acids, basically. So fatty acids, you know, things like, um, oleic acid, linoic acid, palmitic acid, um, steric acid, all of these are fatty acids, right? But they have a certain, if you imagine it, it almost looks like a fork, right? The symbol looks like a fork. And there's like a certain number of chains, right? And so the long ones, long chain fatty acids, medium, medium chain fatty acids. And so MCT oil is, is, is capri I can never say it, caprylic, capric acid. Um, which is a certain number um, in terms of how long the chain of fatty acids are. Now, for people with seborrheic dermatitis, I think I'm going to put out the seborrheic dermatitis video before this one. If not, that will come after this one. When it comes to seborrheic dermatitis, the type of yeast that lives on your scalp that doesn't bother everyone else but seems to piss your scalp off a lot is doesn't get fed by the particular particular lengths in terms of the chain if there's a boric dermatitis video has already come I've told you the exact number because I've got I've written everything down but I can't remember off the top of my head now but it doesn't feed the yeast so therefore MCT oil is not going to aggravate your seborrheic dermatitis any more than it already is so yes I am just rubbing the oil I've rubbed it on my scalp with the pads on my fingertips and I'm running it through my hair and that is my equivalent of moisturising seal. Some water with some glycerin in there, you can use some more rose water if you like, but it's everything's very light and this is for people that have seborrheic dermatitis. So everyone else, use whatever light oil you like, if it's jojoba oil, grapeseed oil is good, um, apricot kernel oil is also, is also, also good. Um, Herb oil, obviously, because they, you know, the studies show that it's closely related to um, our sebum. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think in terms of cheap oils. There are more exotic oils that you can use that are quite good, like tam tamanu oil, but it's very expensive and it's quite a viscous oil. So you'd probably want to, not probably, you'd want to um, dilute it with something like grapeseed oil or fractionated coconut oil. I think, I know lots of people are really into whole oils and 100% pure oils. And so when they hear about an oil or a butter or something that has been um, mixed with something else, they think automatically it's bad. But fractionated coconut oils, 
is fantastic because it's so lightweight it's not going to do anything to bother or interrupt your locks so if you don't have seborrheic dermatitis but there's a more viscous oil that you like to use then you can mix it with the fractionated coconut oil or something like grapeseed oil that's quite light and use that in your hair and reap the benefits of that otherwise if you have got seborrheic dermatitis just stick with mct oil um you don't need i mean it's nice to have but you don't specifically need fancy oils in your locks. You just need the oil to seal in the moisture that you've put in. So you've washed your hair, you sprayed in some glycerin with some water with glycerin in it. What you need and the biggest benefit to you is to seal in that moisture and not lose that moisture. So if you just use MCT oil and you've got sporic dermatitis, don't feel like, oh, I'm missing out on all the lovely oils and the benefits. The biggest benefit is keeping the moisture in your locks. Um, running the oil through my locks onto my scalp nice head massage and then I am gonna sit under the dryer for like 20 minutes or so um, it because my hair's quite dry from sitting you know with the leggings on my head for like six hours um, it's not going to take long to dry if they were soaking wet i never try and sit under the dryer i say under the dryer it's like um something that you stick onto a handheld dryer so um i never sit under that with um soaking wet locks because that would take a hundred years so i usually do let it get to this place where it's about 70 percent dry and then i will sit under the dryer um now before i do that let's just smooth this all down I love it when it's freshly washed, it's all light and ooh. Right, so before I do that, I always like to do this front row bit. And so if I push this back, you guys can see what I mean about the edges being a bit rough. But because when I retwist it, it looks pretty normal, that is my secret to disguising it. So um, I'm going to attempt, I'm going to try, I'm going to pause the camera, I'm going to try and zoom in a bit. To see if you can see what I'm doing but because I have been asked a few times to me it's just I am just palm rolling my locks but some people will ask how do you do it what do you do what do you mean by it? I can't get it so I'm going to try and show you on a few how I do it if I am looking down it's because I'm looking at my little my little Jackie Anna palette but I'm going to try and show you what I do so let's get the rest of the hair out of the way and keep the hair that we need to retwist. Um, now, in terms of how often do I wash my hair, the wash routine that you saw me do where I focused on my scalp is probably like every two to three weeks. Let's just tie this away. And the like proper deep wash where I scrub my hair like jeans, I'll probably show you in another video sometime, is the is the wash that I do before I retighten my hair. So any kind of build up or anything that's gotten in, I want to get it out before it's time to actually um, retwist my locks. And I don't want to end up like locking in any of that dirt or whatever. Right, so I've got my spray bowl because it's a bit dry, it's dried a bit. So just gonna re-wet the roots then. Okay, cool. Tutorials are so hard to film if you don't have fancy equipment they're so hard to film if you do not have fancy equipment anyway right okay so before you guys judge me yeah i want to put the disclaimer that this is this is what works for me okay this is what i use i know i know there's so many people that are locked that hate this stuff right but it works for me so i've got eco styler gel this is the olive oil one right um is this the olive oil yeah the olive oil one I use a tiny bit and it only goes on the front row of my locks and as you can see when I wash my hair it washes out really really well so what I do is I take my little comb and I just make sure that my little parting is neat I have a bunch of little crocodile clips and so I clip the rest of the hair away away I take a little bit, I'm gonna show you what I mean by a little bit. I don't know if I don't know if you can see that. It's a tiny teensy bit of gel. I rub it on there and then I only go in one direction across the whole perimeter of my scalp. So I almost do it like I'm doing a flat twist. And then I don't even know if you guys are gonna be able to see that. I'm trying, y'all, I'm trying. 
and I clip it back. Like that. Oh, this I feel like this is a hot mess, but anyway, yeah, and that that's that's how I do it. And so the reason why I kind of do like a fat twist is because I've got like, you know, sparing edges. It's not just twisting a single one, like it would be somewhere back here where there's, you know, it's just a box. It's more like a rectangle. So I need to catch all the little bits and then palm roll it. So yeah, see, I was telling you guys that my hair's growing back. This is the length of these shorter ones that have been growing back for, I think a year plus now. Um, yeah, and that's it. So I think I'm probably gonna speed up this bit because it's quite repetitive and come back when it's drier time. Okay, let me put my glasses back on so I can see what the hell is going on. Right, so I'm done. You can see the clips in there. 
I even tried to like smooth down the little bit, the little baby hairs, a little bit that I've got. And now I'm ready to sit under the dryer. Before I do that, I've got my scarf for my hedges. See how it looks so much neater? Anyway, so this is my scarf. It's about that wide, but I just fold it over. I bought it from eBay and I just use it to keep the edges smoothly tied down. So I'm going to put my scarf over my edges. Let's not get any stray locks stuck in that. Oh, let's move this back a little bit. Lovely. And tie it at the back there. And now because I've tied it down, I can take all these little miniature crocodile clips out if I can reach them, which I normally can. There you go. Okay, that's all of them out. So now I have my sit under the dryer moment. This is what I look like when I go to sleep, actually that's a lie. So I have this, hold on, let me show you. When I'm going to sleep, I put on this, then this is my lock sock, so I put the lock sock on, and then I have this, my giant satin lined bonnet that goes on top of all of it. I look like a right laugh in bed, don't I? Anyway, this is my bonnet thing. I don't know the name of the brand, I can't remember, the Sim Bonnet is F.O. I picked up on Amazon. I had one of these before, but then it got too small for all my hair. So this one is a larger one. And so it's like this, and you attach that end to the other end of your hair dryer. So what I do is I kind of loosely pack all my hair on top of my head so I can get this on. Oh, this is fun, isn't it? Right, so I can get this on, tie it, uh, pull my ears out. So I touch the other end to my hair dryer. And I've just realized I haven't plugged my hair dryer in, so give me a sec. I've attached the other end to my hair dryer and I put it on medium, like medium heat, but I tend to keep my finger on the cool shot from time to time. And then I put it on maximum like airflow and it's gonna puff up like a bounce castle look. Okay, clearly I didn't tie it enough because it's coming off. Ugh. It has got, it's got these under the chin straps, right? That you can put on so it doesn't fly away because that's what a tendency has to be. But I hate putting on because it's uncomfortable and you look really silly. So they have these straps, right? That you can end up looking like little bow peep, look. And so it's supposed to stop it from flying off your head. But I hate putting on, I feel so stupid anyway. So, I'm not going to subject you guys to all that noise, but basically I'm going to sit with this dryer thing on my head for the next 20-ish minutes. Clearly I'm not going to make you watch all of that and I'll come back when my hair is dry. Okay, so it's the next morning. Obviously my hair has dried. You guys have seen, you know, this is what my hair looks like when I retwist the front. Once that was done, I did not take the scarf along my edges off. I leave that on when I go to sleep. I think I explained to you guys before, I'm not sure, but I sleep with that scarf around my edges. I have a lock sock that I put on over the length of my hair and it kind of, I get it to hold on to, so I put it over the little bump, like, you know when you tie in the bow, I put it over the bow so it stays on because sometimes the weight of my locks can like make it slip off. And then I put my giant satin bonnet on top of all of that. So all of those should be able to keep my hair looking neat and then yeah so then in the mornings when I take it all out you know it looks like this and it's nice and neat and fresh and ready to go so yeah that's it that is my wash day tutorial my wash day routine um as I explained this is how I wash my hair most times the times I do a really really deep wash and like do the whole scrubbing your hair like jeans is when I'm going to retighten my hair because anything possible that is in there that's a bit more stuck in I want to get it out before I retighten because when it's especially if it's in your roots area and you retighten it's going to be much harder to get it out so I do a really like deep scrubby clean shampoo then but most times I just do what you saw me do because I've got color and washing a bit too aggressively will um, just 
rinse all the color out and then you have to keep retouching up the hair every wash which nobody wants to do so yeah i hope that was helpful i hope it was useful please give this video a thumbs up any ideas or things that you would like to see please leave it in the comments below and i will see you on the next video bye